Hello all, my name is Wade. I recently developed a Excel spreadsheet which models renewable energy supply for some parts of Australia. It's a pretty simple model that was designed for use by high school students. On the 1st of May this year, I believe it was, the US Corporation Tesla re released a fairly inexpensive battery for use at home to supplement a home power supply. So I was inspired by that to adapt my model to show how PV panels, solar panels and batteries could be used in individual households, how they would complement each other, what sort of outputs you could expect from them, uh, how cost effective they might be. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to use my model. First of all, it's an Excel spreadsheet. So you'll need to download it. It's not on a web page, it's in a Google Drive. So use the link below. Open up the Google Drive. You should see something like this. To download the spreadsheet, just press the download button. You'll get the spreadsheet. Once you've downloaded it, it will show you something like this. This is the first page. This is the renewable energy model. We're not interested in that here. We're interested in this one over here, residential PV plus storage plus EV. So go to that page. <coughs> now, what it does is it models for a home, for a residence, how solar panels, batteries, and maybe electric vehicles could be used to complement each other in providing power for that house. Uh, I'm not going to go through the entire operation of the model, but I'll go through what you will need to what what you will need to make it work. You will need your average daily energy demand. This should be on your power bill. I've got it set to a value of 12 here. To change the average daily energy demand in the model, just use this number up here. So if I wanted to change it to 10 kilowatt hours per day, I just type a one there, and you'll see that this value changes to 10. There's 10 kilowatt hours per day. If you're using, say, 15 kilowatt hours per day, just type in 1.5 up there, and it changes to 15 down here. It will then show you the total energy that you'll use during the year, if you're using 15 kilowatt hours per day. Now, you won't use exactly 15 kilowatt hours every day. It's only using an average. So if you were handy with Excel, it's easy to change the demand. Demand is just in this column here. There's a whole lot of different functions which are using that input that I showed you above. Okay, now the daily output, they're using this as their average daily output, so this is what I'm modeling. You're not using much energy at all between midnight and 6 a.m. After 6 a.m., the amount of power you're using increases, dips a bit mid morning, increases again around lunchtime because most people are at home on weekends making lunch. Increases again at the evening, because most people are at home in the evenings making dinner, etc. They might be using air conditioning in the summer or heating during winter. And then it falls again late at night. Now, you might not have that exact energy um, power profile for each day. Again, if you're handy with Excel, you can change the values, these values here in this column to model what you think your house is using. Okay, after that, so that's one thing you'll need, your average daily energy demand from your power bill. What The other thing you'll need is the amount of solar energy you're likely to get at your house each year. Now, I happen to live in Brisbane, so I'm interested in the solar output in Brisbane. To get that, I go to the web. Now, this site is pvwatts.nrel.gov. It's a US site, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, which I think is based at Los Alamos in New Mexico. Okay, they run this site. Any, it's public access, anyone can use it. How you use it is you do this. You put in where you happen to live. I live in Brisbane, Australia. And press go. Now, you go to this page and it'll say, select weather data for your location. Brisbane's a fairly major city, so they have the weather data for my location. That's at the Brisbane airport. If 
you don't have a weather location near or weather data near your location near where you live try and find the best suitable one the closest one the one that is most similar to your climate okay once you've selected your weather data go to here now this is about your PV panels so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to model one always put one in here because I'm because the model uses a one kilowatt PV panel it'll now it'll enable you the model itself will enable you to change that to different sizes so one leave the rest of it as is tilt angle Brisbane has the latitude of about 28 degrees south so the tilt angle on mine I'm going to model say 25 normally start with something close to whatever your latitude is uh, leave the rest of it the same again use this arrow now what this is going to provide is for a typical meteorological year at your location it's going to tell you how much solar radiation you will receive at your location <coughs> and how much AC energy your one kilowatt panels will produce each month now while the monthly values are pretty interesting <coughs> I'm more interested in the hourly values that's what we're going to use in the model so I go down click on hourly open the file it's an Excel file okay it's Brisbane at my latitude 27.38 degrees south etc <coughs> I'm interested in the AC system output what we need to do is copy this so just left click on it scroll down the page to the bottom we don't want that last value there because that's the sum of everything above so stop there right click and copy now we are going to go back to the model in this column column D title is TMY for typical meteorological year PV capacity factor just go to the first grid there it's cell D5 before the first output the midnight on the first of the first and press paste okay so it will copy and paste it will paste all that information from the uh, NREL website to this column now it's going to use that what it's telling us that if you had one kilowatt of PV panels on my roof in Brisbane on the 1st of January in a typical year I would be producing about 400 watt watts of power at 10 a.m. in the morning at midday I would have been producing 433 this typical meteorological year it has different weather conditions it has periods when it's cloudy it has periods when it would be raining when PV is production would be low showing it down here so it's fairly low on that day low there so it would have been cloudy on that day a big a bit of cloud there pretty sunny on these days okay so how the model uses this it allows you currently it's for one kilowatt just say I had three kilowatts of PV on my roof or if I want to buy three kilowatts of power at the moment I'm not going to have any storage capacity I'm going to turn these things off over here by making them zero because I'm going to use them later on okay it's showing that during the during a typical year my panels would produce 2178 kilowatts hours of power or energy and that would pr provide 43.8 percent of demand so total energy demand is up there for that 15 kilowatt out output actually I'm going to change my average demand down to 10 kilowatt hours per day so it's showing the total PV energy produced was 4575 I used sorry I did something wrong before I used 1730 hours of it at my house and 2850 would be excess so if you're connected to the grid if you've got an on-grid PV system that amount of power would be, or energy would be exported to the grid now what happens if I want to keep this energy and use it I need a battery right? that's the energy that I'm producing that I'm not using but I might be able to store it in a battery and use it later now the new Tesla batteries are 7 kilowatt hour batteries so I'm going to put 7 kilowatt hours in there that's a decent battery size for an on-grid system now it's showing that I'm using 300, 
3,439 kilowatt hours of my total, which is 94.2% of my total demand. So I'm getting almost all of my power or energy during the year from my PV panels and battery combination. The excess now is only 953 kilowatt hours. Okay, total amount of energy produced by PV hasn't changed because I've still got the same size panels in there. Okay, this is some data about the battery. The battery is now supplying 1,714 kilowatt hours and the rest of it is coming directly from the panels. I'm using it as it's being produced. Now the batteries aren't 100% efficient. They lose some energy as they're being charged and discharged. So for the good, decent quality lithium ion batteries, the type that Tesla are producing, they have about a 90% efficiency, of, so about 10% is being lost. So this is just showing that you're losing about 10% of the total energy being used to recharge the battery. Okay, so we're losing 4.2% of supply, the 191 kilowatt hours. Okay, showing that the battery is being fully discharged at different times of the year. Down here, this is being shown on the graph. So this period here, the battery was fully discharged, recharges during the day, discharges at night, recharges during the day, discharges at night. So this is the battery level in blue. The light blue at the top here is when there's excess power which you'd be exporting to the grid. And again, this is just a PV production on each day. Okay, so what if I decided I wanted to see what something else looked like, say 4 kilowatt of PV panel simply changes. What if I wanted to use, say, 10 kilowatt hours of battery? Again, you can see what, see how much power you'd be using, how much you'd be getting from the PV down here how much you're using, how much is coming from the batteries, how much is being used to recharge the batteries, how much is lost, how much is exported. Okay, so it shows all of these things. It's showing how many battery cycles you go through each year. So how many times the battery is emptied or completely discharged, then how many times it's recharged. Now that's for an on-grid system where you're still connected to the electricity in the mains, the mains power supply. You're exporting your excess and when you run out of battery power and PV, wherever it might be, you are still getting electricity from the grid. What happens if you go off grid? Now, the spreadsheet can model that as well. If you go off grid, you'll need a diesel generator as backup. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a number in here. Anything other than zero will do. And what I've done is turn on a backup generator. So now what the model is showing that during the year, showing again, I've got the three kilowatts of PV panels on my roof. I've got 10 kilowatt hours of storage. I now have a diesel generator to use when the battery runs out. And what the model shows is all the times that I'd be using the generator and how much energy I'd, be, I'd have to receive from the generator. Okay, so I'm using the generator pretty often here, and that's in summer. In winter it's going to be even worse. So this is March, which is autumn in the southern hemisphere because I'm in Australia. So if I go through to winter, you can see you'd have to use the generator every day. So that's not very efficient. That's not very cost effective. I want to use the generator less. So to do that, what, I, what would I have to do? Well, maybe I'd have an extra, some extra PV supply. But can still you see down here, I'm still using the generator 63 times during the year. That's way too often. So what I need is a bit of extra battery capacity. Okay, so now I've got 20, 4 kilowatts of PV panels on the roof, 20 kilowatt, 21 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. Now I'm using the generator only twice during the year. So those times are probably in winter. And you can see during a typical year when I'd have to use a generator if I was using that setup. You can see the battery is rarely dis completely discharging, but then there's periods when there's cloudy weather. You can see the PV supply is low. There's a lot of cloudy weather. So the battery is being discharged. It's running down. But the cloud is cleared and we're getting sunny days again. So the battery is once again being recharged. Okay, so there's the first time I had to use the generator. So towards the end of April, there must have been some very cloudy and rainy weather. The PV output is very low over these days. So I'd use the generator to recharge the battery. And there'd be a second time somewhere. Okay, here, 16th of May, the second time. 
that's happening. Okay, so the model's illustrating for you. Basically, it's giving you a guide as to how the system would work. If you had four kilowatt of PV on the roof, 21 kilowatt hours of storage, you'd need to use the generator twice a year for a total of 29 kilowatt hours of energy. Okay, but there's a lot of excess power here, so maybe that isn't the best system. But, so maybe you could use, say, less, P fewer PV panels to get your output. Now you're having to use a generator seven times during the year. So that might be acceptable for you. It just depends on your personal preference. Now, this is a bit more advanced. This might be more futuristic. If you have an electrical electric vehicle, say electric car, and it might have a battery capacity of 40 kilowatt hours, you could use that battery capacity to recharge your home battery instead of using the generator. At the same time, you could use the excess power you're generating every day to recharge your car battery. So what I'm going to do is turn this one on, any number other than zero in there. Now what it is showing me is total energy that's being supplied to the house. It's 100% of demand. Okay, I'm having to use the car seven times during the year to recharge the home battery. Okay, that'd be the green lines in the diagram. At the same time, I'm able to use 952 kilowatt hours to recharge the car at different times of the year. So what will that look like? Okay, again, the yellow line is the power being supplied by the PV panels on the roof. The blue line is the battery discharging at night, being charged during the day. The light blue line is the excess power. This purple line, the negative values under here, is the energy you're using to recharge the car battery at night. So I think this is set up to deliver five kilowatt hours on each charge. Occasionally, I'll get, occasionally there'll be plenty of charge in the battery and then it can deliver 10 kilowatt hours to the car. On a typical commuting day in the city, we drive say 20 or 30 kilometers during the day, maybe a bit more, 30 or 40 kilometers per kilometers during the day, you might use about 10 kilowatt hours of your car's battery capacity. So this would completely recharge that lost power. At night, this would be half of it. So it's showing how you could use your electric vehicle, your EV, to recharge your home battery when it gets low. So now we're recharging the house's batteries from the car. At other times, the home batteries or the home PV supply is being used to recharge the car's batteries. So that's basically what the model does. It allows you to check how different amounts of PV and storage capacity and whether you've got electric vehicle or diesel generator can be used to meet your daily energy demand. Okay, I'll just go through one more. We're still, there's an excess supply of 9.6% there, which is still a bit much. If I had more PV supply, I could recharge the car more. I'm now meeting 100% of my demand. I'm using the EV battery three times during the year to recharge the house, the home batteries, while I'm using the home supply to charge the car for about 1,800 kilowatt hours during the year. Okay, so I hope you find this informative. The main thing you need to know is your energy daily energy demand. Just if it's 15 kilowatt hours, put 1.5 up there. I can't remember why I didn't have just 15 up there. Probably I should have. And you need to go to that NREL website to find your typical, to find your solar output for your typical meteorological year. Once you've done that, you can just try different values in here, here, and turning these things on and off to find out how a, how a system would work for you. So thanks for watching, and all the best.